Okay, folks, let's get started. Let's begin with a couple of observations about the particular approach of the text that we'll be using. The challenge with criminal procedure is that there's just so much stuff. There are so many people investing so much of their time and creativity and energy into this system, and you can't take it all in. There's just so much doctrine and so many cases running through this, uh, this pipeline, these pipelines, this complex system. Uh, that you really can't take it all in. You, you need some strategy for sorting through all the material in a way that tells a coherent story and gives you some manageable vantage point on all of this crazy complexity going on. One possible way of doing that is to focus on federal constitutional criminal procedure. That is, you take the story of the Warren Court from the late 50s through the uh, late 60s, uh, and then you ask, given that a major reorganization of criminal procedure, uh, how have later Supreme Courts, U.S. Supreme Courts, responded to, responded to the promise and the, the challenges set out by the Warren Court? This book is not going to take that approach. We're going to be looking at how, what other institutions will be doing, in particular, state institutions. Criminal justice is primarily a state function. Uh, and the things that state institutions do are really interesting, really important, and the most important uh, institutions involved for most defendants going through. So we're going to take the focus off of the, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court and ask just more generally what's happening in criminal procedure in the states. This is consistent with the view of Justice Rehnquist here, or ultimately Chief Justice Rehnquist, uh, whose uh, whose court uh, moved away from some of the some of the Warren Court uh, precedents and promises, uh, and uh, tried to make more room for state institutions to operate. I think they effectively made more room, and so we're going to be looking at what those state institutions are doing with the extra room that the Rehnquist Court uh, and later Supreme Courts. Uh, gave them. We're also not going to limit ourselves to the uh, to the work of courts, whether it be interpreting federal constitution or state constitutions. We'll be looking at what legislatures do as well. And so here you see vis uh, pictured a uh, a legislative building. And we'll be looking at what legislatures do when they pass statutes. They profoundly affect what happens in the criminal system both through their funding decisions and through the statutes that they pass about what their agents uh, have to do to when they're collecting evidence for use in state court. So we'll not only be talking about constitutions, uh, but also about statutory criminal procedure and how these different levels of law interact. Finally, we'll be looking at uh, executive branch materials, policies from prosecutors' offices, policies from police departments, the ways that various players in the criminal justice system fill in the gaps left by constitutions and by statutes to address additional issues that come up. In that sense, each system is its own criminal procedure, and so this book is criminal procedures in the plural. And finally, there are going to be several themes that, uh, will, be, uh, that will be important for us as we look at this localized, what we could call street-level federalism, this interaction among different uh, institutions. Uh, we're going to be talking all along the way about high-volume questions, uh, those places where legal doctrine has a real-world impact, uh, particularly on large numbers of, uh, of cases. And we're going to be focusing on the ways that legal doctrine responds to social change, events like the attacks of 9-11 or major changes in public priorities about drug enforcement. How do those social changes get reflected in legal doctrine? Those are the kinds of things that you can track when you're watching lots of different institutions at work at the same time. This is an approach that we hope is empowering. Rather than a law student waiting around for word from on high about what the new doctrine will be from the U.S. Supreme Court, as a lawyer, you get involved in local institutions, you have an immediate impact on local institutions and therefore the shape of the local criminal process. So this is a, uh, an approach to the law that gives you a sense of how different levels of government interact, how different branches of government interact, and it gives you a sense of where you can make a difference most immediately, where the process gets changed. 
So in that sense, we hope criminal procedures uh, will be engaging for you along the way because you'll be able to picture yourself there right away. So let's jump in.